Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Do you have a Honda Odyssey 2006-ish uh, type model that has difficulty with doors opening? Maybe they get stuck halfway through, something like that? This video is for you. Apparently this is the problem door. It doesn't do it all the time, but of course not. Works fine now. But what happens occasionally is this door will go part way back. It won't close sometimes. This is the test that I use. I grab the back of the door with it open. And if I've got a lot of movement like this, then the repair we're about to perform is your most likely fix for this issue. Step one is going to be remove this piece of metal in here. Uh, to do that, we're going to need to remove this tail light and then there's another screw in here. Why don't we start with that screw? To access the screw, start by opening the door and it is located right here. I'm gonna use this long screwdriver to access the screw. It's a Phillips head screw. Well, this one's a little rusty. So I'm gonna go get a little bit of penetrating oil. I do like that penetrating oil. Works really well. Let me go get a magnet to grab that. I will close the door with the force. Oh, do or do not. There is no try. Next, open the lift gate. And you now have access to the fasteners for the taillight located here. Just peel these up. Underneath you will find you can either use a Phillips head screw or I prefer to use an eight millimeter. Here is that uh, Phillips head slash eight millimeter. Oh, and by the way, if things are out of focus up until now, it's because the cameraman just discovered that he had it on manual focus. Bad cameraman, bad. To remove the taillight, pull it straight back like this. There's like a little plastic thing that holds it in up on this side, but pull it straight. Maybe it might be better to say try and pull it straight forward. You don't want to do that. It's like I got some gluing to do, but you want to pull it straight back so that it comes off of this. Take this off. Just counterclockwise on the bulbs and you got the whole assembly, which I'm now going to repair. Day. Now we remove this 10 millimeter. With the fasteners removed, you might think you could just pull this off of here. You can't. You actually have to push it forward this way to slide it off of some plastic clips that it's sitting on. In order to do that, you need to open the door. But the thing is, is that's going to give you a very narrow window to remove this. So you have to be very careful of the finish when you go to remove it. So first, open the door. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if this door only opened part way instead of all the way? There's a way we can do that. If you put the window down, check this out. The door won't open all the way. Pretty cool, right? Push this forward. And then, like I said, very, very carefully. Try and get this guy out of here. There we go. So you have a better idea of what you were doing there. These little blocks go into these openings and that's what this slides into. So when you push it forward, it goes into this larger part of the opening, but this is hooked onto there. Now I'm gonna remove those two fasteners after I support the door. They're 12 millimeter. I'm just gonna put a wood block on my floor jack and go right up under the middle seam of the door to support it. There we go. You don't need to jack the whole van up, just support the door, that's it. I'm gonna remove those two 12 millimeters now. You can mark the outside, like maybe take a marker or something, that way you're sure to get it back in the same place because its placement is important. However, I can often just look at the dirt and where the, uh, I call it a witness mark, where the metal part was 
attached to the door and match that up. You know, just sort of slide the two pieces together uh, like there are pieces of puzzle. But you can go in here and mark this before you remove it. That way you're sure to get it back in the same location because that's critical for this door to work properly. I've gotten to use, I've grown to using markers rather than scoring the paint. I used to score the paint with my pocket screwdriver, but that can eventually invite rust. But no one's really going to see these markers, marks. If it's sort of binding that's last fastener, then just sort of adjust your floor jack a little and you may be able to find that sweet spot. And be careful when the, this doesn't drop down and damage the paint. All right, with that disconnected, I can sort of move my floor jack a little bit, give myself a little bit of working room. There we are. And this just comes out just like that. Ah, yeah, and that wheel is destroyed. See, it just fell right off. And that's likely what the problem was, is that this would get into a certain position to where it would cause it to bind. And when it did, the door wouldn't move. Eventually these just disintegrate completely and it makes an awful noise when you go to open and close it. Now, I'm feeling the slack that I have here. This is actually not too bad. I bet I could swap this out without getting into the motor on the inside. So I'm gonna go and grab a pair of needle nose pliers and I'll be right back. Probably should have started with this. This is a very visible area on the vehicle, especially if you're working on a nice vehicle. This one honestly is old and kind of scratched up, but it's my friends and I, I don't wanna add new scratches. So find some way to protect the finish. I'm just gonna take some masking tape here and put a couple pieces in this area just so that I can work without worrying about damaging the finish. That should be enough, but take the whole side of the van if you want. To do this properly, the way to do it is to remove this inner panel, which would require moving the seat and there's a bunch of screws and things that are inside of here and then located about in this area behind this panel is the motor assembly for the door. In the center of that, there's a dial that you can use to put slack in this. In fact, I'll grab some footage from another video I did on an older model Odyssey where I did this same uh, procedure. It appears that I may be able to skip that step and I'm gonna skip that step because <laughs> removing all this is kind of an undertaking. So. You can do it the way I'm doing it, or you can remove all of this. You'll see the motor assembly. You put slack in the motor and do it the proper way. I'm going to use this pair of needle nose pliers and see if I can get away with something. All right, so we just pull this out like that. And we've got a fair amount of slack here. These cables are very similar to uh, parking brake cables. I'm just gonna take this pair of needle nose pliers well, here, I'll start with this side. Once you get one side out, it's fairly easy. And this other side, push it down, and it should come right out of the slot. Here's the part number for the right side. Here's the new part. As you can see, the wheels are nice. Bad. Good. Bad. Good. But we don't have this piece, so we got to swap this over. Let's start by removing this clip, which I'm just going to dig in here with a screwdriver. And luckily I found it. But anyway, don't lose that. <laughs> Once again, don't lose that. Maybe a little penetrating oil. We like our penetrating oil. And then this pin will come out simply by knocking it through. Hopefully the camera's not moving too much because the cameraman seems to be laughing at me today. It's supposed to be laughing with me, not at me, Derek. Once you get it past that little knurled end there, you should be able to pull it through. 
should. Again, maybe not. Taking this guy over to the wire wheel to make this easier for reassembly. This new piece has all new stuff, so I don't need to transfer anything over. Just take this piece, put it back on here like this, because you need it to, okay, so picture that as being the door, then it needs to sit like this, and then the spring-loaded thing will go through this way. I'm gonna take a little bit of grease and lubricate this pin, and I'll do that to prevent rust, but also, you know, maybe make it work a little bit easier. And you still have to get past that little knurled part. So a few taps. And it's sticking up far enough. Remember our clip. And there we are. It moves a lot easier now. Don't put any lubricant on this, because as you can see, there's already lubrication there. Installation is just the opposite. I'm gonna come in here, start with this side, slide it down in, make sure it fully seats. There we are. Do the same thing with this one, but we are likely gonna to have to, and the closer you get to the body, the more slack you have. And I'm just gonna see if I can insert it, and then I'll twist it around, get it into position like that. So now that it's like that, I'm gonna keep pushing up on this piece. Hook this back up in here, and it's super important that you get into this guide. If you don't get it into this guide, and this is on the outside like this, that's no bueno. It's gotta be in there. Now, all we gotta do is bolt it back up. Hard part's over, sorta. We kinda gotta get those holes and everything in that disc door to reconnect. So, gently. Now, line the bolts back up. Sweet. I'm just gonna run these down close and then I'll check the alignment and then I'll run them down the rest of the way. That looks lined up. Before we put the trim piece back on, you wanna see if it works. Sweet. Now I'm gonna put the window up to see if it goes all the way back. And it does. Now I'm gonna put the window down so I can get that trim piece back in. Here's something to be aware of while you're doing this work. Don't leave the key on for too long because you could run the battery dead. Ooh, I suppose we need to take the tape off. <laughs> Once again, be super careful. This is the guy you gotta watch out for, this up here. So try and keep this in that zone where it's not on the finish. And then once you get it in there, like I said, you want these to go on these. And then once they're there, slide the whole thing back like this. And then you can check it where you ever close it up. Everything seems like it's where it's supposed to be. If it wasn't, you would know. Now I'll put the window up so I can make it go all the way back. Just to show the difference between good rollers and not good rollers, here's that test I showed you in the beginning. You've got a little bit of movement but that's it. I'm moving the whole van more than anything. In fact, if I just 
that's as much as it moves now. It's so like I said, it's pretty definitive. You can move this back and forth a great deal. The screw goes back into where it came from. All right, here's my repair. It's still a little gooey, so I have to be careful. But it's just the opposite. You just want to push it into that thing instead of trying to pull it out. I guess don't even pull on this part. Just try to pull on the sides and not definitely do not pry against that piece because, well, you see what happens. Amber bulb goes on top. Once you get it in, just turn it clockwise. Line up that peg. Gently push it into place. Okay. I'm going to very gingerly run these fasteners down. Apparently the way these go in, the clip part goes on the bottom. I use the force to do that. Anyway, as you can see, it's working a lot better. This, in my experience, is the most common problem with these Odyssey doors. The proper way to do it is to take apart the interior. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a previous video I did that was on a 2001 that shows that procedure in a little more detail, but I think you get the general idea. You can do it like this, but be very careful of the finish. And when you're trying to hook those cables in, the closer you are to the body, the better. But once again, tape around the finish so that you don't scratch things up over here. Otherwise, I'll put a link in the description to additional information, tools, parts, that sort of thing uh, to try and help you, related videos and all that. A couple more things. If you've got one side that's bad, the likelihood that the other side is also bad or going bad is pretty high. So you might consider doing both sides no matter what. But you can do that same test that I showed you at the beginning of the video to find out if you have bad rollers on that opposite side. That said, I did do a video on the other side. I did this one in real time. In other words, I didn't do any cuts or anything. I just went through and did the job that I'm making available to premium members. I'll put a link to that down in the description if you're interested. Now back to you, Eric. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. Aside from that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.